after thinking and thinking and going over a million different ways that I could make over this piece, I figured out what I want to do. I decided to start with the top drawer. I take the top drawer outside, I remove all the hardware, and I'm going to sand only the top drawer to see what's underneath this wood. Um, how hard is it to get the finish removed if I only sand it? And it turns out it sands off super easy. So I'm like really, really happy about this. I don't have to use any kind of chemical stripper to get the finish off, which is such a relief. It literally, it took minutes to remove the finish. Now I bring the rest of the piece outside and I'm just inspecting it. It's got some gouges that I'll have to sand off, but I'm overall really happy because I'm using 150 grit sanding paper. I, I would use a 120 normally, but I, I don't have it. So I'm using what I have. I have the 150 grit and it's coming off so much easier than it normally does. Once I remove the finish on the top, I lay the piece onto its side and I'm only going to sand two drawers down from the top. Now for the trim, for the dresser top trim, I'm still using my orbital sander. I'm just going to be really gentle with it. I'm not going to um, put a lot of pressure on it so that I don't it's nice and round. So I'm just using the orbital sander on a curve. And then for all the corners that my orbital sander wouldn't reach, I'm just taking that 150 grit sanding paper, folding it in half, and I'm getting in all the areas that I couldn't get in with the sander. I'm so lucky that this finish is so thin because it really does come off super simple. And then I continue around the whole dresser, sanding two drawers down. I wanna get rid of everything. So I go with my orbital and I use that little piece of sandpaper for those hard to reach spots. Now once I have everything sanded off um, above the top two drawers, <laughs> then I'm gonna take it in the house and I'm gonna clean it up. The first thing I need to do is use my vacuum to get rid of all that sawdust, all that sanding dust. And then I'm using Dixie Belle's White Lightning Cleaner to clean down the rest of the piece, which includes the drawer cubbies when the drawers are out and the actual drawers. And even though there's a lot of dirt and stuff on this piece, I could also tell that this piece will be a bleeder. So I'm gonna definitely have to use a primer, a blocking primer. Now I'm using Dixie Bell's Chalk Mineral Paint in the color Sandbar to create a wash. I would say it's about two parts paint to one part water. And I just mix it up and I'm going to apply it to all the areas that I sanded. So the top half of the piece is getting a wash. I have my water mister close by because I want to make sure that the paint stays wet and it doesn't dry while I'm applying it because if it dries it's not going to have a washed effect it's going to have full coverage and we don't want full coverage. I want you to be able to see that uh, beautiful wood grain through the paint. Once I apply my wash, I'm gonna take this uh, lint-free cloth and I'm just gonna wipe it down. And I keep wiping and I, I'm not trying to make streaks on it, so I'm trying to wipe it back so that everything looks even. And I move my way up the piece, through the piece. I do the top, 
Um, I apply this wash on everything where I left the wood exposed and I do this twice. So once it's dried for, I leave it about two hours, I come back and I do one more coat of the wash. And that's because I wanna make sure everything looks even. I don't want it to look streaky and I wanna make sure that I have enough coverage so that um, if there's any unevenness in my sanding, that it covers it. So it's gonna work as a little camouflage too. A wash can be kind of tricky when you're dealing with corners. Um, you want to go with the wood grain, and then when you in the corners, you kind of can't you can't wash it, you can't rub it off. So you have to kind of tap it and be very gentle. So that's what I do in the corners. And if there's a spot where I rub like way too much off, I use what's left on the rag and I just kind of dab it back on there. Now, if you haven't figured it out already, I am going to do a dipped technique for this piece. So now I need to measure, I'm just measuring about two and a half inches down from that second drawer, and I'm gonna add some blue tape so that I, when I paint the bottom half, it's gonna have really nice crisp lines. Now before painting with any color, I need to use a clear coat. So I'm using Dixie Belle's clear coat in satin. And this is to add a barrier. Look, if you if you watch, I'm, I'm going up the tape. I wanna make sure that I spread it um, so that it goes in the tape. So that if I get any bleed through, once I remove my tape, it's just gonna be the clear coat. So that is the way that I get really nice crisp lines. I always add a sealer first before I add any color. And I'm really focusing on going in that upward motion to make sure if there's any space between the dresser and the tape that it gets covered with the clear coat. And I let the clear coat dry before I do anything else. I'm even pushing down with my finger, like pushing that clear coat, making sure it's really in there. Now I have the piece of furniture tilted back, um, leaning on the wall, because I need to paint these little feet. They would not come off. Um, they must be glued. <laughs> and you know, I can hit it with a hammer or a mallet and do all that, but there's really no point. I can just paint the feet. So I'm using my blocking primer first. I'm adding two coats of Dixie Belle's Boss in white. One of the best tips that I can give if you're looking for a, a minimal or a brush stroke free finish is when you're applying your primer, make sure that you're, it's just as smooth as if you were apply, applying your paint. Because if you have brush strokes in your primer, you'll have brush strokes on your paint because those, that primer is gonna show right through. Today I'm using a brush to apply my primer, but usually I like to use a roller best. I think I get the best finish with a roller. Um, when I'm using a brush, I'm using really, really thin coats of the Dixie Belle Boss. Um, I, the thinner it is, the more I can spread it out and I get no brush strokes. Now for the paint color, I'm using Dixie Belle's Fluff. So it's gonna be a really, really true white color. And I use my um, Dixie Belle mini brush and I use my water mister so those every time I use the chalk mineral paint I always have my water mister in one hand and the brush in the other hand this is so important for me to get that really smooth finish and to get a brush stroke free finish um, I find it super easy with this paint with the water mister to get a nice smooth one and brush strokes are fine if you get brush strokes you don't have to um, really focus on not getting them but I 
like for this piece, for this style, I want it to be really clean and crisp. So I'm really focusing on smoothing everything out. Dixie Belle has a few white colors that I could have chose, but I really like Dixie Belle's fluff because it has a cool undertone to it. Cotton, I don't think cotton really has an undertone, and drop cloth has a warm undertone. But for this piece, I wanted that to be, I just wanted the undertone to really stick out. I wanted this white to be really crisp, and I get full coverage with fluff because it does have an undertone to it. Now for those little feet, I originally wanted to sand them and then add the wash, but since I can't do that, I'm just gonna add um, two coats of the sandbar using, you know, I have to be really careful that I don't get it on the fluff, so I'm using an artist's brush to apply it. And because I'm going for that really clean and crisp look, I'm gonna make sure that I'm using my artist brush to do any little touch-ups. I don't want anything looking messy. So anywhere where I couldn't get the wash in, I'm just gonna use my sandbar and touch it up. And, and in these spots, you can't tell that it's not a wash. So it works out really well. And of course, I'm going to do the sides of, and the top and the bottom of the drawers because it just gives that really finished look. So for that top part, I'm using um, sandbar and then for that bottom part I'll use white. And now it's time to take the painter's tape off. Oh, right there. Oh, there's just a little teeny dot of bleed through. But for the rest, when I took it off the rest of the piece, there's nothing. It's nice and clean and crisp, so I'm super happy. I did wait for the paint to completely dry before I removed the painter's tape. And I'm just, as you can see, slowly, gently, and I'm making sure that I'm going straight across. I'm not pulling up or down, I'm going straight across. Now for the fun stuff, I'm using Dixie Belle's Bohemian Dream Transfer. This is absolutely one of my favorite transfers. Look at that. I'm not actually using this sheet on this piece. I'm just using this one strip from the transfer, but it comes, look at it, it comes with two pages of this. So I can go across the drawer fronts. Oh, I love, I'm telling you, this is one of my all time favorite transfers. And I'm gonna get three projects out of this one transfer. So for this piece, I'm only using this one, um, the white, it's like white, oh, I don't know, lacy, delicate, just so beautiful. I'm gonna use it across the front drawer because I have to add that little extra something. I feel like this is what separates my work from other furniture painters near me. You would always be able to tell, um, instead of just having the dipped piece, I gotta add that little something. <laughs> So I took the transfer off the backing paper and I'm just trying to line it up. I, I like that there's that space from the top of the transfer paper um, to the bottom because now I know that my transfer will be lined up perfectly if I just bring the top of the transfer to the top of the drawer. So I stick it on like a sticker and then I'm grabbing the, um, the stick to rub it on. They provide a stick with the transfer when you buy it. So I haven't had a transfer come off. This is, I didn't burnish the whole transfer before uh, recording. I am going, you're watching me in real time here and it's just coming off so nice and it stuck on extremely well. There were no pieces that wanted to come up. I, this is one of the best experiences that I've had with a transfer.
And I love that it's a repeating pattern, so I had no trouble lining the other half up. So now that the transfer's on, I just took a burnishing pad and I'm making sure that it's on really good, that there's no halo. But honestly, I think I could have actually skipped this step because, I don't know, the transfer was on really, really good. It was going nowhere and there were no, like, no mistakes or hiccups. I'm just, it shocks me because there's always something when I use transfers. <laughs> it was nice to have no issues. And to seal the piece, I'm using Dixie Bell's clear coat in flat. Now I wanted to use flat because I do worry when, when we're using a wash that there's going to be bleed through, you know, um, I've done a couple pieces with a wash where there was some bleed through and tannins that came through, but anytime that I've used the flat clear coat, I didn't have them. So um, instead of using the satin, which I really like, I'm just going to use this flat and I'm going to do, uh, I did three coats on the bottom and then four coats on the top so that the top, I wanted to make sure there was just extra protection on the top. Now the drawers look pretty dull, so I'm using Big Mama's Butter. It's unscented. This one's unscented. I love the orange grove the best, but I'm actually out of it right now, so I do have the unscented. But look, it just brings that color back and kind of rejuvenates everything. And the drawer slides are on the side, so I'm making sure that I hit those sides so that everything slides in and out really nice with the drawers. I've also upgraded the hardware. Um, I think these little, the fan hardwares are beautiful for this style. It just has that boho chic look. I got these from Amazon and you can check the description box below to look at all the supplies that I used. So you remember what it looked like when I first got the piece and here it is today. I overall really really like this piece. I could have done anything i swear i love when i find a dresser like this i love it for decoupage especially but i don't know something was just drawing me to that that white boho transfer i love it <laughs> it's so pretty and i thought this would be perfect for a dipped piece with that transfer and if you enjoyed this video i would love it if you hit the like button and i'll see you next time